What's up everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex and in this video I want to talk about what I want Scream 6 to do with Sydney. So obviously she's not in the movie. I completely understand that and we've definitely talked about it a lot. But I want to kind of summarize if I was the movie what I would do with her character being off screen. And I guess this maybe also considers what you do at the ending to set up right a Scream 7. So maybe I want to start there because I don't know how I'd specifically do it. But I would want to set it up where Sydney would be a part of Seven. Okay. Now, I don't know if they would do something like that, right? With the negotiations, breaking down, all that stuff. It seems, you know, if we want to touch into the controversy, that all it takes is a respectful offer to her and she'd come back. You can go back and forth debating it all day. I would also counter if it's like a female thing, if it's a female problem. Well, Courtney Cox, almost the entire main cast, right? Jenna Ortega, Melissa Brera, even Jasmine, right? So I don't know why it was so disrespectful to Nev. I'm not going to go too far into it. But maybe it was because she wasn't in the movie a lot, right? That's been kind of uh, thrown out there. So if you give her a good offer, right, or you're thinking in, in the background, now, is there a disconnect between the people that offer her the money and then the filmmakers, right? That's a tough thing because it is difficult. You don't want to end the movie on some sort of cliffhanger that almost relies on Sydney. If you don't have her, you're, you're not going to do it, right? Which is which is kind of tough because you think, well, you have the Sam scene right at the end of this movie, most likely based off of, I guess, speculation. And so I do think if we're thinking about like how the ending works and if there is a setup, this will probably have one of the stronger hints towards another movie now yes there's always like the the flash at the end to kind of signal more of these movies are coming but in terms of like literally setting up the plot where there will be more they kind of all honestly they all stand on their own uh again you have that ending where it's like okay well there'll be more to it and maybe you have some kind of unresolved things like sam still sees billy at the end of five like stuff like that but at the end of the day you could end really at any point you wanted you could have stopped at one you even could have stopped at two it didn't have to be a trilogy this could be the one to break that trend and so again you know the reason i'm spending so much time on this is if this is the movie to break that trend and to really signal to people at the end of the movie hey we want one more we almost kind of need one more right to do stuff okay you have that and i think that will honestly happen i really do do you include sydney in that how do you include Sydney in that? Well, it would probably all come down to motive and if there's like a killer that escapes or survives or, you know, whatever. That's probably the only way to signal that Sydney would be in the next movie is some, and I, we've kind of floated this before, some sort of idea that they're going after past survivors. They're kind of cleaning house and, and getting rid of all these loose ends. Now, Sydney is obviously not there. Now, this does tie to what I want to see from the movie entirely on Sydney. So a couple of things, right? Number one, they need to explain why she's not there. You got to throw it out. Somebody's got to say it. Now, who's going to say it? I think Gail makes the most sense. Maybe Kirby, because maybe she's got like some sort of information, right? I mean, it kind of makes sense. She'd have information. So maybe she knows Sydney's current whereabouts and she's trying to keep it hidden. And she's like, you know, she's not going to come here. However it goes. But I imagine it's one of those two. I guess like the third option could potentially be Sam. Maybe they swapped phone numbers when we weren't looking at the end of screen five. You know, something like that. I do think Gail makes the most sense to say it. Now, do you have to say it? I think you kind of do. Even though in all reality, it's kind of like understandable why Sydney wouldn't go there, right? In fact, to get characters to places, I guess, this far in, you actually kind of have to give reason why they would be there, right? So, like, Gail, you know, the, the morning show and all that stuff, it makes sense why she's there. But if she wasn't there already, and then in this movie, in Scream 6, she was, I think you'd have to kind of explain how she got there. Because it just, when you move characters around, you got to kind of, you know, say why. So for Sydney, it actually makes the you know in a weird way, it makes the most sense to almost not talk about it, right? Because it's like, well, no, duh, why would she? But yet again, there could be reasons, right? All these people getting attacked, her longtime friend of Gail getting attacked, right? And then whatever the motive is. So again, it it really does tie back to that because again, the idea of maybe going after all these past survivors, and I don't know for sure that that's happening. Maybe I'll have to include that in my final predictions video of you know what is the actual motive here. 
I mean, it could be, right? Because you got the scene of, of them in the, uh, the the police station or whatever. Kirby, Gale, Tara, Sam, they're all survivors. So that's the thing they all have in common is they're basically final girls in some sense. So whatever the motive is, I do think that has some part of it. Even if it just all connects to Sam, everybody else is kind of in the way, right? Even if it all leads to Sam and it really is Sam v. Ghostface 1v1 at the end, they have to get through everybody, you know, to get to Sam. So would Sydney kind of become aware of that stuff? Yeah, I think she would, right? You hear Gale gets attacked. Now, I guess it depends on where Gale's scene is in the movie, which actually we talked about in the last video, right? Where is that apartment chase scene? Because if it is a cliffhanger end, which I don't think it is, I think that's almost the least likely. But if it is, well, you know, that kind of actually eliminates and that hurts the entire idea of Sydney. But if it's somewhat early on, you imagine that's got to trigger something. Because, if it, well, if Gail dies, that's why I think she honestly can't die. Because if you don't have Nev in this movie, you kill Gail off. You can't even have Sydney react. You'd have to wait till 7, hope she signs on to have Sydney react. So I. I really think it kind of kills the idea of killing Gale. But even if Gale gets, like, seriously attacked or gets injured, gets put in the hospital, you imagine she's got a call. Now, she doesn't have to call, like, in the movie. You don't have to see a scene where she's on the phone pretending to talk to a non-existent Sydney. You don't have to do that. But you get you can have a dialogue line later on where, hey, I called her and all this stuff. One idea I had floated very early, back when this Nev drama was really going on, one thing I personally think is cool, and you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments in case you didn't hear me say it back then. What I would really love is to hear something from the killers. So again, if you haven't been you know, staying up with all the screen videos I've made, I guess it really relies on the idea that they're going after survivors. Granted, right? If they're not doing it, maybe it kind of hurts my you know, idea here. But if they are, I'd love to hear something even from the killers talking about how they tried to get her and they were unable to. Even in some of these TV spots we've heard, and I guess past things as well, the things Kirby says are very interesting. Like she's investigating the ghost face, you know, murders. Ghost face has come to New York. I think that was a line in one of the most recent ones. So it does almost sound like whoever's doing this New York is just kind of the newest target. They've already done it in the past, maybe like a month or two before the movie starts, right? Like the start time, maybe right before it. So maybe you could say something. Maybe Kirby says it. Maybe, you know, somebody said, or, you know, again, I, I like the power of the killers saying it, but Kirby could as well, where she says like, hey, they attacked Sydney," or they tried to attack her and she got the better of them and she escaped. Or then at the end of the movie, you have the killers, you know, when they're doing their, their dialogue, their monologue, I should say, uh, they can say like, hey, this was our plan. We wanted to wipe you all out. We did most of it. And you can list off, you know, the deaths they've accomplished. You are the last couple, which would probably be Tara and Sam at that time, right? And then uh, we even tried to go after Sydney, but we were unable to. You know, she she got the best. I that I really I like that idea. I've had the idea for my God, almost a year at this point now. I never heard anybody else say it, so I just want to kind of like uh, stamp it as as my theory. But I I really would like that. I feel like it's a it's a good thing because what that does, in my opinion, is it elevates her character. It almost gives her character something to do without her actually being in the movie. She's not in the film. You can't do anything with her. But you can literally make things up. It's it's basically just like telling a story. I mean, you could do that with any of these characters and fill in, say, the missing gap between five and six, right? You could say something that they did in between. And that elevates their character to some degree. They don't have to act it out. They don't have to show you it. They can just tell you that they did it. And then it's up to you to measure it. And you say, oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, I'm going to add that to uh, what makes the character cool or likable or whatever. I mean, it happens all the time. Does it happen to a character that flat out is just not in the entire film? I think that's probably more rare, right? So I think if you can somehow fit it in where you say, hey, she did something. She, you know, she got the better of these people without her even being in the film. You know, that, that doesn't solve the issue of her not being in the film, but actually gives her character something to build on and gives her character something to do. Maybe like Paul Walker in Fast and Furious is maybe another, like he's normally like a babysitter, right? Like in a way, his character is doing stuff without the character actually being there, without Paul Walker being there, right? They kind of keep the character around just through dialogue and not even his own dialogue, just somebody else's. So I really think you could do that with Sydney. So that that's what I would want. Okay, I would want something where you elevate her character. 
in the best world or best case scenario, it would be that because it's not just saying, uh, she didn't make it this time. You know, she slept through her alarm. She missed her plane. Like, it's not saying she went into hiding to stay away. I, I think that's the easiest, right? That's like a very, you could throw that line out there. Anybody could say it. It makes sense. And you're done. Like, you're literally done. Uh, they're going after us. Sydney's got a husband. She's got two kids. She went into hiding. So she can't be harmed because we, you know, uh, she doesn't want to be harmed. She doesn't want them to uh, come after these. But it, it would beg the question. See, if you do that, it is easy. But if you do that, well, in five, you could have done that as well, right? In five, her entire thing was like, well, they're going after everybody, including the originals with Dewey being gone. I'm not going to rest till they're dead because who knows, they may come after my husband or my kids, right? So she had basically the same idea if you're pretending what she may have in six, she has the same idea, but in five, she actually took the fight. To, like, she's so cool, which is a cool, I mean, I like that about her. I really like that they did that in five, like love or hate the film. The idea that Sydney is like so elevated and just being strong nowadays that she's not afraid. She's not running away. She's literally saying, if there's even a chance, there's a ghost face that could bring harm to my family what I'm going to do is not actually go into hiding. Maybe they will, but I'm actually going to address the problem head on. I'm going to take it out myself. Firstly, that's sweet. Secondly, what would change about this one, right? Now, maybe Ghostface is more uh, <laughs> capable, let's say, you know, in this movie. You could have something like that, but I think it would still be the same thing. In fact, that's actually not even true. Yes, Ghostface may be more capable, but what's the theme we've seen in the trailer? Well, we've even seen Tara and others, the whole point or the whole plot maybe of like the second half of the film is to lure Ghostface in and like spring a trap on them so they're so confident or they're they so want to take Ghostface out that they're going to literally do something to bring Ghostface in and then catch him and it's like okay well that definitely sounds like something Sydney could be a part of so see what I mean so you gotta give her to make it, I think, a little bit elevated more than it would, you got to give her a better reason than just, oh, she went into hiding. Uh, or we're not going to even call her. Something like that because, oh, Ghostface isn't even after her. So those are some things I don't want and then other things that I do want. So let me know what you think in the comments. How many lines you think they'll talk about Sydney? What do you think she'll be up to? Do you think it ends on like a cliffhanger that needs Sydney for seven? What do you think? Let me know. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Bell icon turned on. If you want to join our Discord, we have a whole Scream server. People go back and forth talking about Scream Theory. So I'll leave the link in the description and a pinned comment if you guys want to check that out. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.